Up to this point in our video series, we have learned how to analyze accounting transactions, record them in the general journal, and post them to the general ledger. These are the processes done daily to track all of the accounting records. We've also learned how to create a trial balance to check for errors before creating the financial statements at the end of the fiscal year. Now that the fiscal year is over, the final steps in the accounting cycle prepare the accounting records for the new fiscal year. Some of the accounts in our chart of accounts are known as permanent accounts. They are called permanent because these accounts retain their balances from year to year. Cash is a great example of a permanent account because we wouldn't want all of our cash to disappear at the end of the year. Another example of a permanent account is loans. Our loan balances don't disappear at year end either. We still owe these into the next year. There are also some accounts that have balances that are cleared out and returned to zero at the end of each fiscal year. These accounts are known as temporary accounts since their balances are only there temporarily until year end. Anything on the income statement is an example of a temporary account. At the end of the fiscal year, net income is reset to zero and begins again at the beginning of a new year. This allows us to track and compare income from one year to the next and identify trends and see the growth of the company year over year. The easiest way to remember which accounts are temporary is to use the acronym RED, which stands for Revenue, Expenses, and Draws. These three accounts are always temporary. Everything else is permanent. The process of preparing accounting records for a new year involves clearing out the temporary accounts and moving all of their balances to capital. This is done through a series of journal entries known as closing entries. Let's look at the process of creating the closing entries using an example. So when I think about closing entries, I imagine them being kind of like glasses of water. Each glass represents one of the accounts that we'll be using for the closing entry. For example, we have our three temporary accounts, revenue, expenses, and draws. Each of them have their balances emptied into capital, so capital is also represented. Then we have one extra glass. This empty glass is known as income summary. This is a temporary account that remains at a zero balance most of the year and is only used during the closing process. So let's take a look at how this closing process works. There are essentially four different journal entries that are made as part of the closing entry process. The first one is to empty revenues. So everything in revenue is emptied into income summary. If we look at our trial balance report, the only account that we're working with right now that is a revenue account is sales. And this has a credit balance, in this case of $19,500. So looking at a T account, if sales has a credit of $19,500, and we know that sales needs to become zero, what do we need to do to make sales a zero? We would need to subtract, and the way you subtract in debits and credits is to use the opposite side. So since sales is a credit of 19,500, we would need to create a debit of 19,500 to make sales zero. So in our journal entry then, we would begin with the date of December 31st, or whatever the end of the fiscal year is, because Closing entries are always made on the very last day of an accounting period. Then we would debit sales for 19500 and we are moving that balance into income summary, so income summary would receive the credit for 19500 Now that revenue is empty, the next step is to empty expenses. In expenses is also emptied into income summary. If we look at our trial balance report, all of the accounts that come after the revenues are going to be expenses. So in this case, we have three of them, advertising, rent, and utilities. Using advertising as, as an example, if an expense has a debit balance and we need it to be zero, then how would we make it zero? Again, to subtract, we would use the opposite side. So that's $2,100 as a credit. If we take this to our journal entry then, since our expense accounts are going to be credits, what they're getting emptied into is going to be the debit. So on 1231, we would debit income summary, but we don't know for how much. To know that, we would need to know the total of our expenses. So we can begin by entering in each of the expenses on their own credit line. When we're finished entering all of the expenses, these are totaled. In this case, our total comes to $12,600. That 
becomes the debit for the income summary account. That way our total credits equal our total debits and our journal entry balances. So it doesn't matter how many lines this particular journal entry has, and for many businesses they have a lot of expenses, this can be a very long journal entry. So long as the debit to income summary matches the total of the credits to the expense accounts, then the journal entry will be correct. Now that our revenues and expenses are empty, it's time to empty our income summary account as well. So that is going to be taken out and emptied into capital. Now we don't know how much the income summary balance is by looking at the trial balance report because this account is only used during this closing process. So the easiest way to know the balance in your income summary account is to pull out another handy T account. So the income summary account began by receiving a credit from revenues for $19,500. It then received a debit of $12,600 from expenses. Now we've learned previously that opposites subtract. So if you subtract the $12,600 from the $19,500, the remaining balance is a credit of $6,900. Part of the reason why we dump everything into income summary and then into capital again instead of just dumping revenues and expenses directly into capital is because this subtotal of income summary can be compared to the net income on the income statement because the income statement is just revenues minus expenses. This allows us to double check our number and make sure we haven't missed anything before this is closed to capital. It also allows capital to have only one line from the revenues and expenses, a single entry of net incomes total. That keeps our capital account cleaner and helps us um, have better reporting when we close the books. So now that we know what our net income number is, we need to make it zero. So if the income summary has a credit balance of 6,900 and it needs to become zero, how are we going to do that? Again, Opposite subtract, so we're going to create a debit of $6,900. So then our journal entry on 1231 would be a debit to income summary of $6,900. That money is being moved into capital, so we would credit capital for the $6,900. Now that works really well if it's a net income. But what happens if instead of $12,600 in expenses, we actually had $26,400 in expenses? Now when you subtract that from revenues, you're going to have a negative number, which moves our total to the other side, and it becomes a net loss because our expenses exceed our revenues. So when you have a net loss, I have a debit balance of 6,900. If it needs to be zero, we're going to need to credit the account. So net income is a debit income summary to zero it out, Net loss is a credit to income summary to zero it out. Are you going to remember all the details of that? Probably not. And this is why I like using the T accounts for the income summary. If you can record the entries that have been made during your closing process into a quick T account, you will easily be able to see where your total is and what adjustment needs to be made to make that total zero. So now that income summary is zeroed out, the only thing we have left that's temporary is draws. So draws would need to be emptied into capital, like the other temporary accounts, in order for our close to be complete. Draws on the trial balance had a debit balance of 2500 So for us to empty it and make it zero, we would need to do the opposite and credit draws for 2500 Again, the journal entry for that would be on 1231, and since we're crediting draws, we're going to debit capital for that amount, and then the credit goes to draws. So there are the four closing entries that are made as part of the closing process. If you've done it successfully, when you're finished, all of the temporary accounts, like these glasses, should be empty, and all of the money, just like the water in this example, should be moved to capital. If that's the case, then we know that our closing entries are done, and we're ready to move to our final steps. Once the closing entries are completed, the final step in the accounting cycle is to do one last trial balance to ensure that no mistakes were made in the closing process. However, since we know all of the temporary accounts should be empty by now, only the permanent accounts with balances are included in this trial balance. 
Otherwise, it is exactly the same as the first trial balance you created before the financial statements. Because this trial balance is created after the closing entries are completed, it is known as a post-closing trial balance. As long as a post-closing trial balance ties, the accounting records are considered closed for that fiscal period and you are ready to begin the accounting cycle again. To learn more about closing a period and other accounting topics, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit ToriNorman.com.